Welcome to my first video. Uh, we're just going to be playing some NF5 Zoom here. And let's just jump right into the gameplay. That's a fold. I'm going to try and go as deep as I can into the thought process behind the hands. So here we can steal pretty much anything on the button. Especially on NF5 zoom, they really don't free that much. Obviously here we just completely get super nice odds to just <coughs> set mine. Gonna be triple barreling here. With the Fardu suited. This is one of the not so good turns. But I'm still going to be triple barreling. Okay, now just fold actually. Or wait, I, I do still have the flash round. If he has trips, we have implied odds, so I'm gonna call. And yeah, obviously, this. Yeah, if we just play for call and hope he checks. I don't think that happens often enough, so we need to have some equity to go with our hand and this time is fine, especially if we have implied against 10, if we hit flush. So yeah, I mean, now we're definitely dead, right? There's definitely a chance he's bluffing here, but I'm not gonna be rising as a bluff on NF5 on the river against that line. The reason I want to trip a barrel here on this flop is that he will have some king-10 type hand and call twice every single time and then fold the river. It's very unlikely that the turn is something like a 10 here now. Like this 10 is pretty unlucky, so to say. Most of the time the turn will be like a queen or some offsuit deuce or whatever and if I trip a barrel and then the river is like a spade, I mean on a spade I make a flush, but just to get my point across, if, if I trip a barrel, there will be a lot of runouts where he will be forced to fold the river. Even if I do block the flush row, but blocking like a 4 and a deuce of spades is really not that important, especially not in button versus big blind. The, the ranges are so wide that blocker effects in single race pots really don't matter that much. Call oh, 3 bet here. I could. Yeah, let's actually just bet here. Because often they play the line of check, check, bluff, river, and yeah, it's, it's, it's just so gambly to let them draw. Nice, flop another flush draw. I'm gonna be triple baroning here again. So I have the range advantage, it's pretty big here actually. Because I can have ace king, ace queen, ace jack, ace 10, suited variants, like everything here. I can have top set of aces. All hands that. Yeah, he can have them because we're playing NF5, but he should not have something like ace king here. So the reason I triple barrel is. Once again, because I think he will be folding the river too often, and also we have hand equity to go with, so there is a chance we improve to a very strong hand. It's not that I would triple barrel here and every single time I'm bluffing, because 30 something percent of the time I hit my flush right. Yeah, <laughs> it's a super nice board again. Gonna be triple barreling. One more time. With the queen jack. This is a very bad river. Because now I had like ace 5, which could be folding if I triple barrel on, on the deuce. Now it won't fold anymore. So 
So here I'm really not sure. And it's also, we have so much equity on the turn that the bet, the turn bet with this hand is definitely plus EV. And I think if we bluff this river here with this hand, we're burning money. I think I'm actually giving up. If he shows a single king now, like king jack, then it sucks. But he has the ace, so that's really good for us. That we did not bluff the river there with that hand. I would still bluff something like jack 10 of hearts. We could bluff race here, but... I'm not sure... Like, it's not really a bluff race, it's more like... We have a pair, so we're most likely ahead, but Deuces is not good enough to call out a position. I'm just gonna fold. The play's too tricky if I have no information on the guy. If I raise and I don't know if he will call ace high or fold ace high or how he plays his flush for us and stuff like that, it becomes really weird in turns and reverse if he does decide to call, which they do about 50% of the time on those type of boards. It's also that the pool is generally split between two camps. There's the one camp that don't see that much, they see that like 30%. And then there's the other camp that see that like 70%. So that's very like weird if you don't know in which camp he is. Because it obviously has a big impact on whether you should race that flop or not. That's 3 bet here. Get some value with the 7 8. This is a really weird gut shot that we have here. Good check race. I expect it to happen a lot on this board. Because he has all the pseudo connecting hands and low pairs and all that shit, and also they will randomly bluff King Jack, Queen Jack, Jack 10, those type of hands. In general, people are just very, very sticky in three bet pots compared to single race pots. At least that's my impression. And it's also, I mean, the impression is not based on just feelings alone. It's also that if you look at your database, you will usually find that, for example, your CBET frequencies or your CBET success frequencies are slightly worse in 3-bet pots compared to single race pots. Which makes sense too, because yeah, if you play against unexperienced players, they will obviously have better ranges in 3-bet pots than in single race pots. I mean, experienced players too, but with especially with unexperienced players, you will have... Um, yeah, they flop a pair and they are not willing to fold it on flop or turn. No matter what position versus position or whatever, they don't care because they don't have the knowledge to even start caring about it. We have to fold if he raises the turn here. There are too many strong hands he can have. Yeah. Especially in the multi pot, they will never ever have a bluff here. It's impossible. The only like bluffs that they could have is something like King Ten of Diamonds, but that's not really a bluff. 
just vote there, it's just always at least a pair. Or some pair plus very strong draw. He's never never gonna do that with a queen jack. Never ever. In the history of, of of the entire universe. And even then, even that hand has still a gut job. Whoops. Sorry for that noise. going here on here other than folding now we have ace king here free vetted against another gun there's some people who call it here but i'm not a fan of that experimented a lot around with playing calling ranges called calling ranges preflop and it is really hard to make it profitable especially in zoom where you have just no idea of what people are doing post slop like one guy will be very aggressive, the next guy super passive, and you just never get the weed on what they are. It's also that people are tilting all the time, and sometimes they play passive, sometimes super aggressive, and yeah, you're just guessing too much. But if you free bet, then yeah, play so much easier. I'm just gonna jam the king here. Should be ahead against this range, and I need to protect my hand if that's the case. So we're going to end it here for the first video. Yeah, leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment if you have a question about a hand or whatever. And subscribe if you want to see more of this. And of course, thanks for watching. Have a nice day and good luck at the tables. Yeah, let's play this one last hand here though. Not on this turn, I'm not gonna continue. I think he is very often on something like 7s or 8s, which we can get the full, but yeah, obviously now he has a... Probably a king because we block flash draws and random stuff. I don't think he bets 7s here. Even though they sometimes do it. Anyway, that was it. Bye bye guys, see you the next time.